Brienne and Podrick returned to Winterfell in the aftermath of the Battle of the Bastards, and witnessed Jon Snow's declaration of their coming war with the Night King and pardoning of houses Umber and Karstark. She is notably surprised, along with the other lords, when Jon announces that he expects women to be trained for the fight against the Night King in addition to men, but smiles when Lyanna Mormont expresses her eagerness to this prospect. Brienne later tutors Podrick in the Winterfell courtyard rather sternly, but is struck by Podrick when Tormund appears and momentarily distracts her. Brienne punches Podrick to the ground without hurting him seriously and rebuffs Tormund's advances. She sees Peter Baelish talking to Sansa on the ramparts and approaches Sansa, causing Baelish to leave. Still distrusting Baelish, Brienne asks Sansa why he is still at Winterfell. Sansa reveals that Baelish led the relief force that helped Jon Snow defeat Ramsay, though Brienne quips that Baelish is after something else. She is also present during Jon's second meeting, at which he announces his departure to Dragonstone and Sansa's control over the North, delighting Brienne. After Bran returns to Winterfell, and reunites with Sansa, the two are reunited with a recently returned Arya in the Godswood. They proceed back to Winterfell's castle courtyard together, Brienne and Podrick see them from afar, all three of Catelyn's surviving children reunited. Pod says Catelyn would be proud of Brienne, but she chides that she did next to nothing. Pod says he disagrees with, my lady, and Brienne starts to correct him that she doesn't consider herself a, lady but then stops halfway and just thanks him for the compliment. Some time later, Brienne is going through a vigorous sword practice session with Podrick, knocking him down when he overextends himself. Impressed, Aya interrupts and says she'd like to spar with Brienne, the woman who beat the hound in combat. Brienne goes easy on her at first, but then Aya completely outmaneuvers Brienne using the water dance training she received from Sirio Forel, augmented by her training with the faceless men. Aya achieves many openings that would be a killing blow if she wanted them to be. Surprised that such a young girl is so skilled, Brienne stops holding back, leading to a grueling sparring session. Brienne manages to knock Needle out of Arya's hand but she simply switches to the Valyrian steel dagger she had in her belt. Aya uses her speed and agility to compensate for Brienne's strength and size to overwhelm her until Brienne actually manages to bring her brute strength to bear on a fast-moving target by landing a kick on Arya's chest that sends her falling down. Ultimately, they reach a stalemate, with each of them holding a blade at the other's throat. Arya takes her leave of Brienne, both mutually impressed. When tensions start to arise between Sansa and Arya after the latter discovers the letter that Sansa wrote to Rob, asking him to swear fealty to Joffrey in exchange for sparing their father, which Littlefinger arranged for her to find, Sansa confides to Littlefinger, who insinuates that since Brienne swore an oath to Catelyn to protect both of her daughters, it could also mean having to protect one from the other. Apparently plotting to undermine Arya, Sansa sends Brienne to King's Landing to represent her at the parley with Cersei Lannister. Brienne objects to the idea, claiming that Sansa is not safe alone, especially with Littlefinger around, and advocates leaving Podrick behind to protect her, but Sansa refuses and sends Brienne on her way. Meanwhile, Beyond the Wall, Tormund Giant Spain and the Hound, while bantering, briefly discuss Brienne when Tormund brings up his crush on her. His description of her leads Sandor to discover, to his shock, that Tormund is in love with Brienne, but he shoots down the idea of Tormund winning Brienne's heart, remembering his own encounter and battle with the Maid of Tarf. Brienne and Podrick arrive in King's Landing ahead of Jon's party and are greeted by Bronn and several Lannister men. They accompany him as he welcomes Jon's party when they arrive and Brienne is shocked to see Sandor Clegane alive and siding with the North. As they collectively walk to the Dragon Pit for the Armistice meeting, Brienne tells the Hound that she thought he was dead. He remarks that she came pretty close to rendering him so. She counters that she was only trying to protect Arya, and the Hound says he was as well. Brienne tells him that Arya is alive and home at Winterfell, much to his surprise. When he asks who's protecting her there if Brienne is here, she quips. The only one that needs protecting is the one who gets in her way. They share a smile over that. At the meeting, Brienne stands with John's party under their canopy and shares an uneasy glance with Jamie as he escorts Cersei to her canopy. She sits silently during the proceedings, witnessing Queen Daenerys Targaryen's dramatic entrance on Drogon and the revealing of the White to Cersei and the others. In spite of this, Cersei declares that she will not stand down or help the North fight the coming war with the dead. As the meeting disperses, Brienne accosts Jaime and begs him to talk to Cersei to try to convince her to put aside their petty differences and join them in defeating the Whites. 
Jamie doesn't believe talking to Cersei will do any good. She is seen standing with John's party when Cersei returns from speaking with Tyrion, apparently having decided to help the North after all.